This airplane sure looks like it's on a fun cross country. So how do we figure out our own ground speed on a cross country flight and what time we're going to arrive at the destination? Well, that's easy enough. Let's take a look at this chart and figure out that information. First of all, let's assume that you're over Hampton Roads Airport, which is in the upper left-hand corner of the chart near Area 2, and you cross it at 1456. You then cross Chesapeake Regional Airport at 1501. And where you're going is First Flight Airport, which is down here in the lower right-hand corner of the chart near Area 5. And what you want to know is, given that information, when are you going to arrive at First Flight Airport? Are you going to get there before your fuel runs out? Okay, taking a look at the trip between Hampton Roads Airport and Chesapeake Regional Airport, the first thing we can see pretty clearly is the time between those two airports. We crossed Hampton Roads at 1456, we crossed Chesapeake at 1501, so it took us five minutes to fly between those two airports. In order to find out how fast we're flying, what we need to know is how much distance there is between those two airports. So pull out your trusty plotter and plop it down on that chart and let's figure out that distance. We'll use the bottom edge of our plotter to do our distance measuring with the bottom straight edge. Now when you put that plotter down, make sure first of all that you're using the sectional chart side of it, not the world aeronautical chart side, because this is a sectional chart. Make sure also that you use the nautical mile scale. And also make sure that you put the zero point rather than the physical end of the plotter at the first checkpoint, which is Hampton Roads Airport. Now measuring from the center of Hampton Roads Airport down to the center of Chesapeake Airport, it looks like the distance is six and a half nautical miles. Here's five miles, here's six miles, here's six and a half nautical miles. Now let's measure the remaining distance that we've got to fly. That's from Chesapeake Regional Airport on down to First Flight Airport. So move the plotter so that the zero point is on Chesapeake Airport and then take a look down at First Flight Airport and take a look at the distance on the plotter. And it looks like here's 35 and the center of the airport is 35 and a half. It looks like our remaining distance to go is 35 and a half nautical miles. Now, the way we just measured the distance on the chart using the plotter is exactly the way you'll do it for flying your cross countries on your check ride and afterwards in your real world flying. Because in all those cases, you'll be working with paper charts with a very high level of quality control. However, for the FA written exam, using the plotter like this to measure distance will not work. That's because the sectional chart excerpts in the FAA supplemental testing book are not to scale. And the scale errors can vary wildly. The distances measured using a plotter can be off by anywhere from 10 to 30 percent from the real distance. So what's a test taker to do? Well, the FAA has conveniently provided a mileage scale somewhere on each sectional chart excerpt. And that mileage scale is what you have to use on the test if you want to get the correct answer on your FAA exam. So here's how you use that mileage scale. First, take a piece of the scratch paper you'll be given when you start the test and put one corner down on the point you want to measure from Hampton Roads Airport with the straight edge of the paper lined up along your course line. Then use your pencil to draw a line on the paper at the first point you're measuring to Chesapeake Regional Airport. Next, move your paper to the mileage scale for nautical miles 
all your work on the FA written will be using knots for speed and nautical miles for distance and put the corner on the zero nautical miles point with your pencil mark out along the scale to the right. And notice the zero point is not at the far left edge of the scale. It's a little bit in from the far left edge. Now when you look at the pencil mark for your distance, you'll see it's a little bit short of the tick mark for 10 nautical miles. So to get the exact distance, slide your paper to the left to put the pencil mark on the zero point. Then take a look out to the left of the zero point and count the tick marks. Each one of those tick marks is one nautical mile. This one is nine, and over here to the further to the left is 10, but it's a little bit past the nine, so maybe nine and a quarter nautical miles. Next, measure the remaining distance that you have to fly. So put the corner of your paper in the middle this time of Chesapeake Airport with the straight edge of the paper on your course line and draw another line on your paper at First Flight Airport. Then again, move your paper to the mileage scale for nautical miles and put the corner on the zero nautical miles point with your pencil mark out to the right. And you'll see that your pencil mark shows the distance is exactly 50 nautical miles from Chesapeake Airport down to First Flight Airport. As you can see, that's a huge difference from what we measured with the plotter. 50 nautical miles using the mileage scale, and we got 35 and a half miles using the plotter. On the FAA exam, you need to use the mileage scale on the chart in order to get the correct answer. But the mileage scale will also come in handy in real life if you need to measure a distance and you forgot to bring your plotter along. So now we know that it took us five minutes to fly just over nine miles, so about nine and a quarter miles, and we also know we have 50 miles to go. And with that information, we can now go to the circular slide rule side of our flight computer. Now remember, the first thing we said that you always put on this side of the flight computer is, how fast? Now you may say, heck, I don't know how fast I'm going, but sure you do. You just don't know it yet in how many nautical miles per hour. What you do know is that you covered about nine and a quarter nautical miles in five minutes, and that will tell you how fast you're going as soon as you set it up on the flight computer. Distance is always on the outside scale of the flight computer, so find nine and a quarter. Here's nine, one, two, and a quarter on the outside scale of the flight computer. Time is always on the inside scale. So on the inside scale, find the 50, which is going to represent five minutes because you don't have a five. Find the 50 representing five minutes on the inside scale and set it lined up next to the nine and a quarter on the outside scale and leave those set next to each other and simply look around on the inside scale of the flight computer for the 60 minutes indicator. If you flew nine and a quarter miles in five minutes, then in 60 minutes or one hour, you're going to fly 111 nautical miles. 60 minutes on the inside scale points to 11 plus one tick mark on the outside scale, and that represents 111 miles. So the speed, the how fast, we've just figured it out, is 111 knots. But what we really want to know at this point is, how much time will it take us to fly the remaining distance, and therefore, what time are we going to arrive at First Flight Airport? So don't move the dial any. Just simply look around the outside scale of the flight computer for our remaining distance, which is 50 nautical miles. 
Miles are always on the outside scale, so when you find 50 on the outside scale, next to it on the inside scale, it will tell you how many minutes that will take. So here's 50, and here's 25, 26, 27. It will take 27 minutes. Now, what we do is we take that 27 minutes and add it to our time over the second checkpoint, which was Chesapeake Municipal Airport. And we cross that second checkpoint at 1501. So 1501 plus 27 minutes gives us a time over First Flight Airport of 1528. Now when you look at the FAA answer choices, you probably won't find exactly 1528. If you don't see that, you should find an answer that's very close, probably an answer of, let's say, 1526, and that will be the answer the FAA is looking for. You may not get the exact answer the FAA does because of scale errors on the chart, differences in measuring between the checkpoints, or differences in the readings from different flight computers. But the FAA's answers are far enough apart that the correct answer choice should be pretty obvious. Now take a look back at the chart and let's talk about a very common mistake. It is very common when working on this kind of problem to accidentally and erroneously add the remaining time en route, the 27 minutes, to the wrong time. A lot of times people will add it to the time over the first checkpoint instead of correctly adding it to the time over the second checkpoint. Make sure you use the latest time fix to add that to. Add the 27 minutes to the time over Chesapeake Airport to the 1501 that you cross Chesapeake at. See? Nothing to it.